All right, thank you. Good morning. So my name is Chen Chen. I'm uh, from University of Kentucky, and I will later join University of California Santa Cruz as an assistant professor. So this is a joint work with my student Yeo Yu and uh, my collaborator uh, Jamo and Ching. So I'm a networking guy, and Jamo and Ching are theoreticians. So this is this work we present. Uh, Concise forwarding information base for scalable and fast name switching. Um, so, what is forwarding information base? So, it is uh, FIP in short. So, a, a FIP is actually a data structure, typically a table, um, in a network device like a switch and router to determine forwarding actions for a particular packet. So, the import of a FIP is a destination or the packet header. And the out output uh, of the FIB is a uh, forwarding action, for example, forwarding uh, the packet to a certain um, port or just drop the packet like that. Uh, so for the destination uh, or the identifier of the packets, we uh, in uh, legacy networks, we use IP addresses. However, uh, recently uh, people proposed to use names rather than IP addresses for the identifier of a packet. So most names are the flat, permanent, and location independent, such as MAC address and the other names proposed in the literature. And the, the, using names provides flexible uh, networking services for mobile devices and the virtual machines. Um, and actually, uh, in um, SDN, the flow IDs like packet headers can also be considered as names rather than uh, uh, IP addresses. However, the biggest problem of using names rather than IP addresses in the FIB is that the FIB can grow to be a very large size, which is called a FIB uh, explosion. Uh, this is uh, actually, uh, in fact, the problem Gordon uh, just talked about yesterday, uh, FIB explosion. So um, the example of Necnor names uh, has been proposed or has been already used in enterprise and uh, uh, data center networks. Uh, they, some of them propose to use MAC addresses rather than um, a layer two uh, infrastructure to do routing and forwarding. And in future internet architectures, a lot of proposals include uh, using name inside um, and also in LTE. And so our new FIP design is called Concise. And it's the, the good properties of Concise is that it, it uses very small memory. Uh, to be the, the FIB and um, the memory size is very important because uh, fast memory is expensive and it's uh, power hungry in devices so compared to uh, existing results like a Cuckoo um, we use only like 10% to 30% and uh, and the second good pro pro property is that our query speed which is a lookup time is very short and uh, the query speed is very fast and compared to existing result it achieves like two times and five times uh, faster um, however the update speed of our FIB is uh, slightly slower than some FIBs but it still support uh, millions of updates per second um, so the the general idea of the concise is that um, we consider FIB as a data structure, and a data structure always consists with uh, construction and update components and query components. So uh, our idea is to move the construction and update components to the SDN controller and only keep the query component um, on switches or in the data plan. Okay, and the updates can be um, communicated between the controller and the switches using the ex standard uh, SDN API, and we can do our optimize optimization on the memory and queries cost on this uh, um, on the in the data plan. So what the concise do is to classify n names. Suppose we have n names in the network into d different sets, and each set is a forwarding action. Um, like uh, forwarding the packets to port one is action, port two is another action, dropping the packet is another action. All right, so we rely on a new data structure also proposed by us called Othello. So what Othello do is to classify the names to just two sets, X and Y. So the idea was uh, motivated based on minimal perfect hashing. 
uh, which is called uh, MWHC perfect hashing by theoreticians. Um, however, this hashing is static, all right. But in network, we need dynamic structure, so we need uh, some changes on this uh, the original structure. And the query, if the query result of Othello is zero, it means that the the key or the name is in uh, set X. Otherwise, it's in set Y. All right. So uh, and the query structure is very simple for Othello. Uh, we have two bitmaps. We, each of them with size m, and m is just n, which is number of names plus, uh, times a small constant. Uh, so in total, there are like two m bits. And um, we have two hash functions. When we have, a, when we want to query a name, we apply these two hash functions and and map the result to one bit in A and another bit in B. Okay, and we take an XOR of the two bits and we get the result, the query result of this name. So uh, the, the result of this uh, purple square is one, which means uh, this name is in set Y. So this, is, this query operation is very uh, simple. Now how do we con construct those two bitmaps? Yes? Is n the, the total number of names possible in the whole universe, or just the number of it, names seen by this router? No, uh, in, in the network. Okay. Yeah, in your network. It's total number of names in your network. Okay. okay. So uh, to construct this uh, two bit maps, we need to maintain a more complicated uh, data structure in the control plane, which is your com com controller, right? So we, we will need to maintain G, which is a cyclic bipartite graph uh, with a set of uh, vertices U's and another set of vertices V's. So when we have a name and we compute, uh, well, for every name, that needs to be processed with this switch. We need to, we compute those two hash functions and we place an edge between the two vertices associated with the hash results. Okay, so, uh, so for every name we need to do this and do this. Uh, and we need to maintain that G is a cyclic. So when we find a cycle, then we have to replace the hash functions with another new pair of hash functions until a cyclic graph is built. So this is actually a perfect hash. Uh, however, um, um, we proved that for n names, the time to find g is not too uh, complicated, it's just O of n, which is uh, uh, not too large. Although we need to re replace a lot of uh, hash functions if uh, a, a cycle occurs. So. And then for every uh, name of it, if this name is for is, is in set Y, which means the two bits should be different, right? So we color those two vertices with different colors, one black and one white. And for this name, uh, at, uh, the yellow one, it belongs to set X. So we color the two vertices with the same color and so on and so forth. So if the G is a cyclic, it's very easy to find a coloring plan. All right. So when we want to add a name or delete name, delete name is very trivial. When we want to add a name, we need place a new edge between the two hash hashes. And then, so for example, in, 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 in this figure, we find that two, uh, the colors of the two vertices are the same. However, this should be in the set Y, which means the uh, color should be different. So we do the color flipping on one side of the edge and we are done. So if G is a cyclic, the flipping is also very trivial. Okay, um, but only classifying names to two sets is not enough. For a switch, we need to classify names to multiple sets. All right, so we support uh, the classification and of names into two, power, two to the power of L sets, um, which is like zero, one, zero, 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 uh, they, that, zero, that one. So we know that for one Othello, we can classify name to two sets. So for using L Othellos, we can classify name into two L sets. So we, we have to maintain L Othellos in a FIB. And an L is usually uh, less than eight for most networking device because we don't expect that we have too many uh, 
uh, forwarding actions on uh, uh, FIP. So in this example, we can see that th th these are two Othello's on one forwarding information base, and those structures are for the same set of names, so they have the same acyclic directed graph, right? But the only difference is that the colors and the corresponding bits are different. All right, the, the, so they, we have the same G and the same hash functions, but we have different uh, current plan bit maps. So uh, do we need, the question is, do we need two L memory reads to query L Othello's? Now we have in total L Othello's in a, in a forward information base. The answer is no. We can organize those bitmaps in a particular pattern, and uh, we, we, then we have two arrays, A and B. Each array is a set of elements, and each element is a L bit uh, value, right? So this A1 and A0, A1. So when we query a name, we just map the uh, name to each, an, an element of each array. And we take the exclusive OR of those two values and we get our results. 1, 1, which means K is in set Z3. Okay, so we only need two reads to query L of Elos, which is very efficient and fast. Okay, so we uh, perform implementation using uh, uh, first is memory mode, which is just running on uh, memory, and then we use a click. Uh, and we use DPDK, we have three implementations. So, and we compare um, a concise with existing solutions. The first is uh, Bloom Future based solutions, which is Buffalo, uh, published uh, several years ago, and Cuckoo Hash, uh, published very recently uh, by CMU guys. And so, this is a comparison of memory size. So concise memory, uh, we have different types of names, MAC address, IPv4, IPv6, OpenFlow, file names. And we, th the results of concise is, he is here, and we find the concise is very small compared to uh, Cuckoo Hash and Buffalo. And this is a query speed, uh, and we find that the concise query speed is always uh, higher than 100, um, millions of queries per second and it's like it has over it's have about like two times or two four times speed advantage compared to cuckoo hash okay and this is updates the updated speed of uh, concise by varying the memory budget and we can see that the, the update speed can always be higher than one millions of updates per second and not this update each update is a network wide update and not just a sing a single update on a particular uh, FIP so uh, so concise is actually essentially key value mapping so it may possibly have more applications such as memory cache and or mm -hmm. the query to distribute content storage or sparse vector processing in um, data mining so but we don't know we haven't uh, started the invest investigation and I'd like to take questions thank you yes Yes, I can, <laughs> I can talk to you honestly. The lim limitation is that if we query a name that does not exist in the network, the forwarding plan will uh, return an arbitrary action okay, for that name. So what we need to do is in the ingress switch of the network, we need to maintain a um, filter or a, access control whatever so if we detect a name that does not exist in the network we need to filter the packet okay but still this result is better than bloom filter because bloom filter for uh, valid names bloom filter will also uh, respond like um, false positives right yes so um, 
maybe you said it, but I, I, I must have missed it. So yeah. if you have, uh, kind of the, uh, I think you used M, M words uh, in your uh, memory. So you have um, each word is maybe L bits, the L of fellows. Yes. And you have M of those. So like the width of the arrays you have. Yeah. How many values can you fit onto those before you start getting cycles in your, um, in your bipartite graph? You mean the expected number of uh, what? Yeah, so, so maybe I have a megabyte width. Yes. Uh, can I fit a million values or a billion values or maybe not maybe not m squared, but you know, how, how far can I fit? Oh, yeah. m is like a, a constant times n, like 2 or 3 times n. So m is like a, around like 5m, five, five, 5 times the number of our names. So if I, if I have a billion names, I need kind of a gigabyte of memory or? or uh, yes, oh, probably. Yeah. 200 yeah. megabytes? Yes. 200 megabits. Mm -hmm. uh, I think similar question, uh, how easy it is to find acyclic hashes? Uh, can you pre-compute these hashes? Yeah, so the time complexity is proved to be O of n, where n is the number of names to find a cyclic directed graph for to construction. And once we find a cyclic directed graph, the re remaining steps are very true. But uh, it will remain throughout the whole working network, or would, would, would you have to change hashes if you find a cyclic graph? Yes, we need to change hashes if we... Uh, we, we, if we, we, we need to construct another a cyclic directed graph. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.